Hi, everybody. Everybody, I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back, and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I'm going to show you all how to make zucchini bread. Zucchini bread is on the menu at the Young's house, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be able to share with you all my recipe for zucchini bread. It's so easy. It's a lot of fun. And listen here, it tastes so good. Here's what you're going to need to make Gina Young style zucchini bread. The ingredients that we have here, you're going to want to use a large zucchini. If you don't have one large zucchini, just use two small ones would be fine. Okay, so I'm going to use these two. You're going to need brown sugar, vanilla extract, you will need olive oil, ground cinnamon, baking powder, and baking soda. You're gonna need salt. You're gonna need crushed walnuts, all-purpose flour, also white sugar. Okay, so what I've already done, now in this recipe, if you like, you can put raisins in. All right, I'm not gonna do the raisins today because I have family members that's really not fans of raisins. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the raisins out. But if you want to use the raisins, go ahead and throw you a half a cup of raisins in there, all right? So I've already measured three cups of all-purpose flour. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, we have our teaspoon here. We're gonna measure out one teaspoon of salt, just like so. You, you know, a lot of people don't understand why we put salt in desserts. We put salt in the desserts because it actually brings out the flavor. It brings out the sweetness in the recipe. Trust me when I tell you this, all right? So then there's our one teaspoon. We're gonna put baking soda as well. One teaspoon also. One teaspoon of baking powder. Just like so. And we're gonna use three teaspoons of ground cinnamon. This ground cinnamon is going to give you an amazing color and a beautiful flavor. Now, there are a lot of people that like to use allspice and they like to use nutmeg in theirs. I'm not that person. I, I'm happy with just using the cinnamon and that's going to give you an amazing flavor. If you wanted to put allspice or if you wanted to put nutmeg, just put a half a teaspoon of those in. All right. So this right here is going to be our dry ingredients. And we're going to do a wet bowl here, and we're going to do a dry bowl here. A lot of people say, do you have to sift it? You don't have to, but if you want to sift your flour, your baking soda, baking powder, and your cinnamon, feel free to. Okay? So I'm going to just set our dry ingredients aside. And then we're going to measure out are wet ingredients. Not to, not to forget about three large eggs, okay? I didn't include that in the ingredients. I'm gonna grab my eggs and I'll be right back. Okay, let's get started on our wet ingredients. I have three large eggs and I've cracked them in a separate bowl because you always wanna make sure that you have a good egg you know, that uh, doesn't have traces of blood going through it. And you also wanna make sure that your egg doesn't have any shells in it. So if you crack it in a separate bowl, you're good. You don't have to worry about throwing your whole mix away because you had an eggshell in with everything. So then we're going to use vanilla extract and we're going to use three teaspoons of vanilla extract. One to grow on. <laughs> I know, guys, I can't resist it. Anytime I use vanilla, I always go overboard because I love the smell and I love the flavor that it puts in everything. So then 
we're gonna use some great olive oil, okay? And we're gonna use one cup. I know that there are a lot of people that like to use a half a cup of oil and a half a cup of applesauce. I find when you use applesauce, it makes for your bread kind of rubbery. So I don't choose to use the applesauce. If you want it to, absolutely you can. You're just gonna use a half a cup of oil and a half a cup of applesauce, all right? So I have one cup here of beautiful olive oil that we're going to mix in just like so. Beautiful. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take brown sugar and we're gonna pack one cup. And it's very important that you pack the brown sugar into the measuring cup. And what I mean by packing the brown sugar is, you know, when you measure flour out, or when you measure, you know, just um, one cup of white sugar, it's different when you're doing brown sugar. And what I mean by that, you're gonna wanna do this. You're gonna want to push it down, see that? See how it looked like it was one cup, but it wasn't. You have to pack it down in order to get the correct measurement for brown sugar. So then you just push on it, just like so. All right, and then you keep putting more in until you get the correct measurement. All right, and that mess, don't worry about that mess on the counter, we can get that up later, right? I hope that you all are having an amazing work week. I hope you all are having a great day as well. This recipe is highly requested, like I said in the beginning, and I'm so excited to be able to share this recipe with you all. This recipe is, um, my grandma used to make zucchini bread all the time. And when grandma made zucchini bread, everybody went crazy. Everybody wanted some and it was gone very quickly. Now, when I would eat my zucchini bread, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. <laughs> just thinking about grandma's zucchini bread really makes my mouth water. I would get it. I would cut me a slice, and then I would smear some butter all, oh my goodness, that's how I like to eat mine. And it was so good, it was so moist, it was never dry, and amazing and so simple. Okay, so now it's packed. One cup brown sugar going right on in, okay? So then we're gonna measure out one and a half cups of white sugar. <coughs> You don't have to worry about packing this one, okay? You know, when people taste this recipe, they lose their minds because it's so tasty. Really, it is. All right? We're going to do one and a half cups of white sugar. Just like so. I'll be excited to give Dakota a piece of zucchini bread when he comes home with a nice glass of milk with ice in it. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to take our box grater and you can see all of the different holes, you know, and one might say, so which one do I use? You use this larger one here this is the hole that we're gonna use, okay? And all you have to do, we're gonna cut this top off and you're gonna put the greens in as well, you know, because that's a question that a lot of people have. Do I put the skin in also? Yes, you do, okay? So I'm gonna chop the ends off and we're gonna grate this up. And then that's gonna go into our wet mixture as well. All right? Okay, everyone. Now, what I've done was I've cut the tops off. 
All right, just like so. And make sure you wash your zucchini off because you know you never know what pesticides are on it or you never know who's handled it in the grocery store before you brought it home. Always wash any vegetables off that you have. Now, I have a confession. I have a confession. When I had the video on Paul's, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. When I had the video on Paul's, I did put more vanilla in. <laughs> That's my confession. I put more vanilla in. I cannot get over the beautiful flavor of vanilla. I guess that's just how I roll when it comes to using vanilla extract. <laughs> All right, so then we're going to go ahead and just start to grate just like so. It's really simple, you know? You're just going to press this up against the grater. You're going to grate it, you know, just like you was grating cheese, okay? You're going to get a beautiful mound, just like this, of the grated zucchini. You know, I think it's so interesting how a beautiful bread can be made from zucchini and it not taste like vegetables, you know? It doesn't taste like vegetables, Nothing like vegetables, but it's amazing. It's so amazing. This right here is one of my favorite breads to make. Absolutely it is. A lot of fun and it's so easy. Get the kids in the kitchen. When you all are doing things like this, or you're making breads for, you know, the holiday to share with family members as gifts, get the kids in the kitchen so that they can get an understanding of how the kitchen works and how to put things together. They will, when they become adults, they will understand the kitchen and they will understand how to cook and they'll like it. They'll have interests in it when they get older. You know, it's really excited to see kids learn how to cook and watch them eat their own food. You know, when you involve them in recipes, when you involve them in the kitchen, you'll see them eat more, even with the veggies. Absolutely you will. Now, what I like to do, some people don't do this part, but what I like to do is I like to take a paper towel or cheesecloth and I like to uh, kind of drain my zucchini a little bit you want this beautiful juice that is naturally formed from the zucchini. But I do like to take mine, put it in a paper towel or a cheesecloth, and just kind of wring it out a little bit to get some of that extra juice out, okay? If you don't want to do that part, by all means, you can skip that part, and your recipe will be amazing as well, okay? It's really up to your discretion. Okay, you can see that we have an amazing mound here. We're just gonna go ahead and put that right in there, just like so. All right, get in there. All right, I'm gonna finish doing this side. We're just about done. We're gonna mix everything up and then we're gonna combine everything together. And I'm gonna show you an amazing trick of what to do with your walnuts so that your walnuts do not float to the bottom. You want for your walnuts to go all throughout this amazing bread. And the way to do that is to coat your walnuts in flour, okay? So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna show you, it's simple, it's simple. Beautiful. We have a nice mound, zucchini going in. So we have our wet bowl, we have our dry bowl, all right? And then I have two loaf pans, all right? And what I'm gonna do with the loaf pans, I'm gonna take a little paper towel, I'll do it now so y'all can see. And I want to take and distribute that olive oil all over the pan just like so. So we won't have any issues of our um, zucchini brick coming out. 
all right? It'll come out very easily. If you have too much oil, just dab it up with the, the paper towel, okay? Easy. All right, next, you're gonna want to flour your pan. So what you do is you're just gonna take a little bit of flour, pour you some flour, and a lot of people don't flour theirs. I like to oil and flour mines. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pat the flour, just like so. Pat that flour out, just like this. All right, same thing here. Get it well incorporated or well coated with the flour and then hit it on the counter just like so all right so you have two pans that are well coated with your oil and flour so now we're going to use our one cup of walnuts you can crush them up finer if you'd like i just like to leave mine the way that they are all right, if you wanted to use a different type nut, maybe you can use a pecan. That would be just fine. So here's what I was speaking about when I was saying that we wanna coat our walnuts in flour to prevent them from soaking to the bottom. And you always wanna mix them in last and you wanna do just a nice gentle fold. Okay, you wanna fold them in just nice and gently, all right? Just like this. That little bit of flour, believe it or not, will prevent these bad boys from sinking to the bottom. Just as long as you don't over mix. <clears throat> That's the reason why I'm not gonna use a handheld mixer today. And I'm also not gonna use a stand-up mixer. Doing this by hand makes for the perfect recipe because you don't want to over mix it like I spoke about. All right? So now what we're gonna do, we have our dry ingredients. We have our wet ingredients. We're gonna need to mix both of them together. Let's go ahead and mix our dry ingredients, just like so. Very simple. Make sure you get it well, well incorporated. You know. You don't want for your baking soda and baking powder to be in one section and your bread doesn't rise correctly. Take your time to do this, okay? My mouth is watering from the time I began the recipe. I cannot wait to eat this. I cannot wait to eat it. As soon as it's done, I can't wait to eat it this afternoon. I can't wait to eat it for dessert and then for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> yes, and you know what? It sounds funny, but I'm so serious. Yes. Okay, so that's well incorporated, beautiful, and it smells amazing. Now we're gonna go in, get all of this well incorporated. Let's see, I might need to, and I think I will. I think I'll start off with a nice spoon and then we'll come back with our whisk. Okay. Really easy, it's not hard to mix up. A lot of people worry about that when they think, you mean you're not using your mixer? But this right here, everything's so wet and juicy. <laughs> I don't know if that was the correct terms, but it, it's not hard to mix at all. See this here? Just a little bit of elbow grease and that's it. And you're in good standing. All right, oh boy, does it smell amazing. I'm so glad I put that extra vanilla in there. <laughs> Not go wrong when it comes to vanilla. Now I've seen people actually, you know how I did the flour in the pan and the oil in the pan? I've seen that people put the oil in the pan and then they take and dust their pan with um, cinnamon. <laughs> I'd like to try it, but I'm kind of, you know, afraid. <laughs> because I don't want for it to be too cinnamony. You know, cinnamony, is that the right word? <laughs> but it is very interesting. 
And I guess that the flour, but you do it lightly. I guess that, not the flour, I guess that the cinnamon would speak for the flour on the pan. And also give an amazing flavor in your dish. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to put our wet ingredients in with our dry ingredients. We're gonna mix everything up and we're gonna fill our pans up half the way. Okay, so let's get this right in. Just like so. Amazing. Boy, does it smell good. I tell you one thing, I would love to put raisins in, but I'm not going to do it. I want each and every one of my family members <laughs> to enjoy the zucchini bread just as I enjoyed it as a kid. Yes. Okay, so then I'm going to start to mix it just like so. And you see it's really easy. It comes together fairly easy. You can use a rubber spatula to do this, a spoon. You can use a whisk if you want, just as long as you get it well incorporated. And don't over mix it, okay? I'm gonna continue to mix this until everything gets well combined. And then I'm gonna show you how to lightly fold in your raisins or your nuts if you're gonna use them. Okay, our mixture is well incorporated. Didn't take me any time to mix it. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add our one cup of nuts right in, and then you wanna fold them gently, okay? And I'm gonna use a rubber spatula to do that. Now, I know I told you all, and because you all are asking for Prince and Polo, the puppies, to see the puppies, I will show you them right now, it's early morning here at the Young's house, and they're asleep. What they usually do is they wake up at seven o'clock when Dakota's getting up for school, and after he leaves, after Dakota leaves for school, they lay back down for a nap. And then they wake up, you know, late morning. And then they're kind of up for the day. And throughout the day, they take several naps. So I have another recipe that I'm going to show you all today, a pasta dish. And I will show you all Prince and Polo in that video, okay? Because right now they're sleeping and I would just hate to wake them up out of their sleep. So here's our gentle fold. Just like this, not mixing it like you're a wild woman. <laughs> Just like this, nice and gentle. You all know how to be gentle, okay? Just like this and voila. All right, we are going to go ahead, put our mixture into our pans and we're gonna fill the pans up half the way because remember, your uh, bread will rise the other half of the way. We're gonna use, because I'm using a dark pan, we're gonna use 325 degrees, and we'll start checking it at 40 minutes. Now, there's a chance, and the oven temperatures may vary. There is a chance that yours can get done at 40 minutes. There's a chance it can get done in an hour. But don't worry if yours is not done in you know, 40 minutes. Just keep checking it with the toothpick or fork. And when that toothpick or fork comes out nice and clean, your bread is done. And the key is to let it set. Let it set for a minute before you take it out. Because if you don't let it set, it's going to crumble up when it comes out, okay? All right, so I'm going to put this in a pan and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, we filled our pans up half of the way. Zucchini bread. It's going to go in the oven, middle rack. Don't put it on the top rack. Don't put it on the bottom. Use the middle rack. And if you don't have a rack in the middle, just pull out one of your racks and put one in the middle. Okay, everybody. I'm going to go in with my toothpick. I'm going to see if it comes out nice and clean. It's done. If it doesn't, it's not done. I want to give them about another 7 to 10 minutes. We'll be taking them out because I had a little bit of goop on my uh, toothpick. About seven to 10 minutes, I'll come back. We're gonna say a beautiful prayer over this amazing zucchini bread. We're gonna give this a try and I'm gonna let y'all know what it tastes like. Be back. Okay, everybody, 325 degrees, 45 minutes makes for the perfect. All right, zucchini bread. I'm gonna show you the trick with the toothpick. Put it in right in center. 
take it out it should be nice and clean that way you know it's done and if you don't worry if you go in you know at the 40 minute mark and you go in and this is really oopy and gooey that's fine just close the oven back up and let it go five minutes later check it again if it's not done close it five minutes later check it again until this bad boy comes out nice and clean now what i want to do is we're going to take a knife and just use a butter knife and you want to release the bread from the sides that way when you go to Take it out the pan, you won't struggle. And also that flour and oil that we used will help to get your bread out safely without it tearing, okay? But I always like to do this just to assure I won't have any issues, okay? And I can feel it moving around just like it's supposed to. Let's go ahead and say a prayer over our zucchini. We're going to let this cool down for an hour before I give it a try. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Lord, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food and the love that you give us daily. Devil, you have no authority in this household. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I'm going to continue to go around this zucchini. In about 10 minutes, I'm going to come back and we're going to tip it over onto this cooling rack. You see, I have my cooling rack on a baking sheet and that cooling rack will allow air to circulate all around your zucchini bread. That way it will not get soggy. If you put your zucchini bread just on a platter or on a cutting board, it'll have the potential to get soggy because you need air to circulate around it. So that's what this um, cooling rack is going to do because air can circulate around it and the cookie sheet. 15 minutes, we'll come back. We're going to slice into this bad boy an hour later. Okay, everyone. It's been 15 minutes. I was able to release these out of the pan with no problem. And I just put a cold, a cold dish rag on top of the bottom of the pan just to help to release them. Okay, so now it's going to be an hour before we come back and taste these. Okay, everyone, let's slice down into, and the good thing about this mixture that we made up today is it makes two. So you can eat one today, and you can take the other and freeze it or give it to someone as a gift. And this freezes very well, okay? So I have a serrated knife here. I'm just going to cut down in. Make sure you let it rest, like I said, for an hour. You would hate to work so hard and just for this to fall apart. Who loves that end piece? Look at that. Oh, look how amazing. Look at this, is it beautiful? And you can see those beautiful walnuts going all throughout. This bad boy is nice and soft. I'm gonna cut the rest, we're gonna give this a try. We'll let y'all know what this tastes like. Look at this, nice and beautiful. And that one there, I am gonna freeze it. Let me show you. Look how beautiful. My goodness, look at that. Amazing, it's the most beautiful. Right, nice and crispy on the top, moist in the inside, soft, never dry, and so flavorful. Give that a try and let me know what y'all think. Listen here, if y'all enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Jeannie Young uploads one of these awesome videos. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know everything about Jeannie Young and what I'm doing on this channel on a daily basis. Let's give this a try. Mm -mm. I'm going in right here from the top because I want that beautiful crispiness and then I want to be able to bite down into that soft part right there. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> this right here, this definitely reminds me of Grandma's zucchini bread. Such a good memory. My goodness, let me taste this with a little bit of butter, just like old times. Just a little 
bit of butter is all you need. I don't know where I used to get that from, but smearing just a little bit of butter on there really does the trick, but you don't need it. But those of you that love butter, give it a try. Look at that. Oh, mm, mm, mm. Oh, go on, that's good. My goodness. Mm. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you all for watching. Good night.